Welcome back, everyone, to the final installment of Fragile Dreams. <laughs> I can't even advance beyond this point. Get a load of the city out there, and the tower up here. It's time to end the game. Let's give a little support if we can. Stairwell. Seto, stop Shin. Anything else? Set. No. And you, at long last. Promise? You got it. This is a long stairway, as is plot-sensitive appropriate. Picture the, uh, the Ocarina of Time stairwell at the end of the game. I know I've given that example before, but it's more appropriate this time. If the ID cannot be completed, That's alright, there's a trick. If the ID cannot be <laughs> Whoops. I might lose my sword as I do this, but hey, I have two more. I hope you don't get dizzy easily. I am happy you made it this far. It's you. But how? Oh, that's the personal frame. The probability of you fulfilling your mission is is <laughs> I suppose that is irrelevant. Knowing you, you will be successful to the very end. I am by your side, always watching over you. Good luck. If the ID cannot be confirmed, you will be removed. Out of my damn way. I'm having a moment. If the ID cannot be confirmed, you will be removed. If the ID cannot be confirmed, I wonder if it's a coincidence that my sword is not breaking for these robots. that might have been the flower girl who we had to raid the mall to get the sun and the moon for. Thank God for these sweet spots. <laughs> oh, Shin's got another thing coming if he thinks he's taking me down. It's alright. Really? If the ID cannot be confirmed, you will be removed. If the ID cannot be confirmed, you will be removed. I keep expecting Sai to pop up to indicate that the battle's over, but she's waiting downstairs. Are you ready? Show me what you're made of. You're almost there. Oh, that's Crow. Crow? Oh. Don't get so excited. I said I was your friend, right? And because we're friends, we gotta look after each other. <sighs> Thanks, Crow. No problem. Now don't kill yourself, but give him all you got. And so I shall. It actually gives you a spot to save in the middle. So comfy. 
Don't mind if I do. Oh, and needless to say, this is a point of no return after the doctor's office, because we beamed up here. You will do this tower and complete the game. Oh. And so I shall. Still a bit of a ways to go, it seems. Or... Or is there? A game, you know... You, you, you see, Shin. I have sufficient light. All I need to do now is find a way off of this platform. Nailed it. It's alright. I won't be needing a katana for this. There he is, the end of the game, staring me in the face. Fight me. Why do you insist on wiping out mankind? Communication through speech is meaningless. You will never comprehend this fact. You realize you're telling you're right. me this in speech. I don't. I don't understand you at all. But no matter what, I know I need people. I'm sick of being all alone in this world. Words will get you no further! You asked for it, buddy. <laughs> oh, we can just produce it from anywhere, can't he? Well, it looks like I can do the katana trick after all, and so I shall. I'm gonna ruin this guy's day. Alright, Shin. You brought this on your own damn self. That's more like it. I know the pause screen takes something away from this, but I want to deal with this. <laughs> oh, he did not like that. Oops. Almost have you now, Shin. Too bad. I'm surprised he hasn't broken out his second attack. He does have two attacks. Next thing I do is kill you. Ah, there it is. Or not. And he 
time now, Shin. I'm surprised. I'm gonna give him one chance. One chance. I do like that you can walk right through him. Maybe it's my dizzy. There it is. <laughs> Not too hard to avoid, but it's over. Once again, that's okay. Why? Why are you trying to destroy the world? It turned its back on me. What do you mean? The world did? Long ago, when I was part of the Human Empathy Expansion Project, I secretly made myself the first test subject. I felt it was my responsibility that a project of this magnitude be carried out as safely as it possibly could. As a result of the tests, I no longer relied on words to reveal the thoughts and feelings of those around me. I believed in the success of this project to grant everyone the ability to empathize by making their thoughts transparent. But you see, when I listened to the thoughts of those all around me, all I heard was jealousy and contempt. My colleagues acted kind, but behind their innocent words was concealed resentment. Some of them envied my scientific ability and youth. Others supposed the very core of my character. They were wolves in sheep's clothing. Such contempt, flooding the air around me, the weak scorned, the strong envied. Even the elderly were regarded not with respect, but disdain. And at the heart of all those negative thoughts was always me, me, me. Whatever empathy may have been felt for others was quickly trampled by people's self-interest. The world is overflowing with hatred and spite. So long as that bitterness remains in the minds of men, this thing we call society will be nothing more than a farce. The world is a hell packed with mean-spirited monsters imprisoned by their very natures who hold on to hate, revenge, and ill will. Even my parents turned against me. They saw me as a monster. They showed me nothing but hatred. Nobody ever understood me. No one loved me. Wanting to end it all. Why is that wrong? I don't... I don't believe you! You? I thought you supported me in my ideas. We'd both become AIs and start a new world. No, not like that. I wanted... The only thing I ever wanted was to be with you. I just wanted to be near you. I needed to be part of your life. When I was brought to the lab, I was so lonely and scared, but you smiled at me and told me to hang on. When you visited and snuck me candies, you touched my hand with your gentle touch, the way it made me feel. You have no idea how happy I was. Shin. The truth is, that I... I love you. But why couldn't I sense that emotion? <laughs> Don't you see? When it comes to the important things, I guess you just have to put them into words. 
<laughs> so there it goes. The AI mainframe in its crystal form. We will soon disappear now. Then Glass Cage will never be able to be reactivated. Fool. You choose such an uncertain, intangible thing as love. Thank you. For everything you've done, Seto. Thank you. And then, then we traveled together. And after countless summers, one day, I was all alone again. A peaceful land. At the end of everything, I was truly and utterly alone. <laughs> oh, wow. Look, the moon is so full. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, in all this time, I don't think I ever got your name. Ren. Ren. Seto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well then, there are still plenty of survivors all over the world. Let's go find them. Okay. What is it? <laughs> Thank you, Seto, for being here. Hey, Ren! What is it, Seto? Thank you for being with me, Ren.
What an unbelievably powerful ending to an unbelievably powerful game. The special contents are nothing crazy. I think it might just be the credit sequence and also... And also... Extras. I think the title screen might be a bit different, I'm not sure. I can watch the movies. Oh, concept art. I'm not gonna go into trailers, but I don't know if I've seen these. Ah, Seto. And all the packs and everything, the basic design. Oh, this is cool. The potential things he could have worn. Huh. I assume this is the silver haired girl. Based on the left dress design. Yeah. Final product. I like the comparison of Seto and Height over here. Sigh. It's kind of weird to see her standing on her feet. Crow, those badass teeth, this freaking Jotaro cap. Oh yeah, you, the young girl who was in fact the old woman. Shin, gets together all that stubble in the original design. Yes. Oh nice. What could the other be? Like the cats? Huh. Could that be Seto's mother or one of the a scientists, maybe? Huh. <laughs> you. The tree boss. Those damn polite robots. The machine. Oh, just ran chillin'. Nice. I think it's the roller coaster. No, it looks like a proper train track, actually. Huh. Well then. That was a good time, and I like the full picture you have here. This game doesn't have too terribly many extras, but what would they have been, realistically? Overall, this was a freaking brilliant game. Beaten Fragile Dreams for the Wii. This game was fantastic. As you've seen, the gameplay can be a bit clunky regarding the combat and occasionally just moving around because the camera gets weird as you look by holding the Wiimo and aiming it in a certain direction, but the gameplay isn't crippling and the story more than makes up for it anyway. The combat's certainly functional enough and you do get a pretty good feeling whenever you take down an enemy and especially pick up an item or level up. As for the story, very emotional, very thrilling, depressing, but with a degree of hope at all points. It was really interesting how things played out, the final interaction with Shin. Now I have to admit that the whole, oh I don't understand love and the power of love saved everything and nobody understands me, therefore forget this whole system of communication, that you can view that as kind of corny, but at least they framed it in a way that makes it sort of acceptable anyway. It reminds me of the first episode of the anime series Kino's Journey, where a whole town had wanted to be able to know what everyone is thinking for similar reasons that Shin had, so they all drank a liquid that had nano machines in them, which would allow everyone to read each other's thoughts. But then you run into Shin's problem. I learned everyone's thoughts, and they all hated me. So you see the dark corners of everybody's mind, so everybody moved to houses really, really far away from each other so they'd be out of the range of their thought frequencies. So when Kino finally came to somebody's house, the person was terrified of, uh, of letting Kino in because she didn't know that Kino had not drunk the liquid, so it was a revelation when she learned that Kino hadn't. It was pretty much the story of Fragile Dreams, really interesting. And you could, you could kind of see where Shin was coming from. He was so scientifically minded that that actually became his downfall. 
It's uh, it's like a cat or a snake. They're really good at focusing on things, but when you focus too much on something, you miss the peripheral sights. Shin was so intent on being able to pick up on communications that he wasn't perceiving certain kinds, like love. And regarding that, by the way, remember the note from the Catalyst that said that Shin was the one person that was nice to her? No, it might not even have been the note. I think it was just Sai saying it herself. Shin was the one guy who was nice to her. And now that you know that your Seto's foster father was involved in Operation Glass Cage, that implies that if she only singled out Shin, then that means that Seto's foster father was not one of the nice guys. He was just a stone-cold scientist operating on Sai like she was just another experiment. This really adds to the note that the foster father left Seto when he said, I've done some terrible things, my life is despicable, you're my one saving grace. Yeah, he was a pretty terrible person. I love that the game foreshadows the ending in the very beginning. We've already seen that when we looked in the Foster Father's library, there were those books on like particle physics and Operation Glass Cage, and one book I actually had missed that I was informed of was the children's book Pirate Isle. So the father may have also been involved in the manufacturing of Crow. And by the way, there's uh, slightly more to Crow than is let on. You know how you can pick up on secret messages with that special flashlight? One thing that I did not pick up in the Let's Play, but I did see for myself when I was doing an alternate take that didn't end up working out, is that in the fairgrounds, if you hold a special flashlight up to the area with all the really tall grass, the area of the teacups where you're hiding from Crow, if you hit up one of the kiosks, you'll see a message that says and I forgot the actual string here, but it says something like, I am SS10BG or something like that. And when I saw that, I was wondering, is this some sort of code? What does it mean? Can I translate the numbers into letters? Can I read it backwards? And I couldn't make anything of it, but it turns out that it was simpler than that. It looks like a serial number. So presumably Crow figured out his true name and wanted to make sense of what that was. So there's even more to that. Crow knows that something is up. And of course he came to the ultimate conclusion in the dam when he saw all the other not crows, the unfinished ones, which made things, of course, all the more sad. By the way, um, YouTube user AnimeLover23458 informed me of something particularly interesting. When I picked up the new flashlight, the high beam one, I just stuck with it. Apparently I could have kept going with a special flashlight and picked up on another message, um, although I don't know what it was. And even back when you first get the special flashlight, apparently you could go all the way back to just about the beginning of the game, the underground station, and read messages all along the way back if you so desired. There are no more memories to pick up, so you would only be doing this for the flavor, assuming you found all the memories at their proper locations the first time you passed through but you can get some interesting messages regarding even the personal frame's previous owner. What these messages are, I don't know. I haven't checked, but now I really want to. That sounds very exciting. If you have a copy of this game yourself, or if you could find one, I recommend you look into that, because that ought to be really interesting to see. So thank you very much for that shout-out. Speaking of shout-outs, I got multiple suggestions of this after I had said what I perceived the masked creatures to be, the, the, the bad remnants of the dead people that you encounter, there may have been another answer to that. I looked at it from one angle, but there is another angle to be perceived. Perhaps they are the fragments of the scientists working on the project. They're being very aloof, uh, telling you that you don't need to know what's going on with them, if they speak to you at all. And the last one followed up uh, Shin's message, don't interfere with the project. They might have just been the scientists working on the project. You meet them with our foster father, of course, Crow, who we learn was one of the science experiments, Sai, who we learn was the catalyst, and of course Shin, who was a scientist himself. And by the way, Sai, her dead body in the hotel, we saw the needle and the, the bottle of what looked like pills, and I suggested that maybe she used it to commit suicide, but now that we know what Glass Cage was, perhaps those drugs were not for that purpose at all. I don't know entirely what they could have been. She might have even been trying to keep herself alive with them. If she wanted to kill herself, all she needed to do was go to bed, which is where we find her. 
So who knows? Maybe she tried whatever she tried, but you don't have unlimited uh, supply of this kind of medicine? Some kind of drugs. So she might have just gone to sleep. You'll also notice, I don't know if there were any bodies that I could perceive, but in the hotel, the beds did appear to be filled. The, the blankets kind of went like this, implying that there was something in them. So we might have just been passing through rooms of sl the sleeping dead. Really kind of uncomfortable if you think about it. I love the little nods this game gave in that direction. Speaking of little nods, one thing that I was rather remiss in my duties as a Let's Player for was the very first thing we pick up in the game, the letter from our father. Also, he left us a strange blue stone and told us to go to the Red Tower, which by the way, I don't know if you know this, but that's Tokyo Tower in Japan. Now, of course, the reason he sent us there, he gave us the excuse that maybe we'd find survivors there. Of course, we found a survivor elsewhere, but the reason he wanted us to go there was probably to stop Shin, and if you couldn't figure that out before, what really clues you in, though it's far too late to remember it at this point, do you remember what Shin was holding? The thing that worked the machine that he tossed to the ground after you convinced him that it was no good? The strange blue stone that our foster father gave us looked exactly like that. He might have wanted us to interfere with the project. And of course he wouldn't have written a letter saying, yeah, I killed the world, that's why I feel so guilty, sorry dude, can you clean up my mess? No, instead he sent us to the tower, suggesting that there might be survivors, because that would actually get us to go there while maintaining our respect for him. So he was subtly trying to stop the second wave of the disaster that he helps to cause. It was a nice touch. Also, one other nice touch that I missed in the lighthouse that someone pointed out was that in addition to the library and the little the cat and the things you could see in the lighthouse, there was also apparently a height chart. You know that you do for little kids, you tick off their height and see how tall they grow. Presumably the father was doing that to Seto, which shows that he really was emotionally invested in Seto and truly raising him as his own son. So the father was doing the best that he could to redeem himself. Uh, hey there. One minor correction I would like to make. That guy with the glasses user Skyscraper provided me with a link to an interview conducted with the creator of the game, and one of the key bits of information he revealed was that Seto's foster father was in fact Shin after all. That's a crazy revelation. See, you know how when we talked to Chio, it turned out that her main body was still alive but really old? That's what happened to Shin. He horribly regretted his actions, so when we saw his ghost, it was still on the stage where it did not, and so he tried to redeem himself by, in some small way, by raising Seto, and that would also explain why he had the strange blue stone, the same one Shin was holding, because it's Shin. What he had done was put the, uh, the part of his personality as well as size into the artificial intelligence that was talking from the machine at the end of the game. And so, Shin's own personality conflicted with itself. So, Shin finally attempted to redeem himself and died of old age. And it looks like he managed to clean up his own mess after all, using Seto as the, uh, the go-to guy to pull that off. That suddenly puts things into a whole different perspective. Our, our grandfather was the nice guy scientist after all. I... For some reason, that didn't occur to me, even though we've seen Chio with old Chio. That just... I didn't see that coming. It was just a really cool piece of information to discover. So, there's that little correction made. Back to the regular conclusion. One thing I found amusing. We finally find the silver-haired girl's name. Ren. What I find funny, though, is that apparently the game hints at it in a couple places, but in addition, it's not that you need her name for plot or anything like that. You don't get spoiled if you get her name, so it doesn't matter too much. But the game sets it up so much. You know, what's your name? And whenever she might answer, something interferes. And you're like, oh, no, come on. Why don't I get to know it? And when you finally know it, it just feels kind of nice. What's funny is that it's in the instruction booklet the whole time. You know how a lot of instruction booklets, especially in fighting games, give you character bios? You know, character number one, Seto, a boy who sets out on a journey through the silent, decaying world in hopes of finding other survivors amidst the rubble.
Next page. Ren, a mysterious young girl with a talent for singing. She wanders the devastated planet, sketching cryptic pictures on the floors and walls of desolate structures, finding little treasures, and befriending stray cats. All the while, she dreams of meeting another human being. So, yeah. Not that it kills the plot or anything, but... Spoiler alert? It just tells you that it's Ren, and it tells you that she is, in fact, the one doing the drawings. Which means that she is trying to subtly get us to follow her. I thought that it was just kind of amusing. So if you read the instruction booklets, you can kind of just... Again, it's not like a crippling spoiler, but you can figure that out before you even turn the Wii on. So when you keep getting those cutscenes, what is your name? You, the player, already know. It's just kind of amusing. Oh, and one more thing that we've figured out now that the game is over regarding Sai. You might have been wondering this whole time, what were all those weird markings on her chest and face? It's almost like, you know, when you cut up a cow for its meat? Of course, I doubt that that's what they planned to do with her, but she was their science experiment, so now that's making a little more sense. And she just kind of had to deal with that. She's even wearing that cap, like that medical cap. It looks like the kind of thing they would put on you, like when you go through chemo or brain surgery or something, when they shave your head and put it on. She clearly had hair, but that's just a thing to notice. And of course, as I said during the Let's Play itself, now we know why Sai seems to know more than she had any business knowing about Shin and the project. She was part of it. She was the experiment. So she knew that Ren was in for a world of trouble. Also regarding the mole, why the hell was that mole there? Why the hell was it so big? It's implied that it got that way by feeding off of the dead. Because there is more than enough of that to go around when the whole world is your buffet table. Freaking insane. People died peacefully, but you know there was that panic. And now, you know why all of those notes, the memories that we got, the, uh, the shout out to the radio station for the last time, everyone expressing their regrets, the family in the chapel, having a really melancholy wedding, knowing that the world was ending. You figured you knew about the world ending, but this means that someone must have said, ooh, Operation Glass Cage is a failure. Yeah, sorry guys, you're all gonna die. So, people figured that out the hard way and had to deal with the knowledge that the next time they go to sleep, they're going to die. Just like one of the last memories we pick up with the guitar. You know, oh, I'm not interested in sleeping just yet, I'll stay up a little longer. My god, that's sad. It's like, a, it's like a nightmare on Elm Street. You're afraid to go to sleep because you might get killed, but in this case, you're afraid to go to sleep because you have a guarantee that once you do, it's the last thing you will ever do. Really, really bitter. Not to mention when we're on the dam, the, the two boys going out adventuring, and the one goes to sleep, and the boy is saying, like, you know, oh, why won't you wake up? And there was that really sad moment. The kid had said that the mother acknowledged this would be his last trip out, because it's not about being sick, it's about just passing out. This game, I am telling you, it's, it's so good, it has so much creative writing in it, and it's so well written. A lot of things call out to the ending, right down to the story of the Seven Bells. The words like mangy, referring to uh, the main girl, who we now know is a female kitten. Um, it was her litter that died. Um, it was the fact that people could scoop her up in their arms with no power, exerted on themselves whatsoever, because she's this little cat. Uh, there was like, she stroked my like head repeatedly. Seems like an odd thing to do for a kid. Well, it's a cat. You know, people not caring so much that she doesn't look like the person they were looking for. If a, if a strange kid came up to you wearing the bell, you would be like, what the hell did you do? But if it's a cat, you're gonna be more forgiving in that regard. I love the way this game is written. Everything really does tie together. And you have that decent ending, although even the ending is rather sad. It implies that Seto's on his dying bed. I mean, you do die of old age eventually, so that's okay. But he said that I hadn't seen Ren for many summers. She may very well have died at some point herself. There is not a lot of hope to be had in this world. Even if there are other survivors out there, most people are dead. So, mm, there is kind of that to just have to deal with. By the way, one thing I didn't become aware of until later, there is in fact a manga of Fragile Dreams which does show you a little bit more of what happens after the game regarding Ren being sick and absolutely needing to find medicine and that was one of the reasons that she ran off at the end instead of hanging out with Seto because she said that, you know, she really liked Seto. 
and if Seto was in her presence when she died, then that would make him sad, and she wouldn't want to do that. Which is, of course, extremely sad by itself. Now, the, the manga doesn't end with her dying or anything like that, but there's another gotta find Ren one more time kind of chase going on, and you'll see where that takes you, but... My god, man, this whole game was a roller coaster ride of emotions. Every time you think you get a bit of hope, something comes crashing down again, but there's more hope to be had if you'll just go out and try to find your next destination. This game is really, really good. Long story short, too late. And it was uh, very much overlooked because it wasn't marketed very much, and it's on the Wii, and you know, this is one of those third party games that you just don't hear much about. And they also tried to Americanize the cover. The cover of the game has Seto kind of looking like a badass with his golf club because, you know, Americans gotta have the hardcore games where Kirby is given an angry expression on all of his covers of his games where he looks cutesy in the, uh, the Japanese version. One thing that's nice though is that Xseed, when they uh, packaged this game, did uh, a thing where they have two sides so you can uh, like put this into the Wii, uh, the game box, however you like. The other side has the title screen with Seto and Ren chilling out over the uh, the pond. So that's a cool thing to have. And then just more just art of Ren in the middle. So you can actually customize this however you like. Of course, you're not going to get the summary of the game on the back, but that's your prerogative. Overall, I really, really like this game. And I'm very excited to have been able to sort of help spread the word on it. I'm telling you, man, Xseed brings over the coolest games. If you ever see Xseed on the cover of a game, definitely consider picking it up, because these guys work with passion rather than exclusively, you know, making millions and millions of dollars. It really comes off like this some... Like, the way it seems to me, it really comes off that one of the people in Xseed sees a game in Japan, plays it, and then goes, my god, the world must know. I'm bringing this over. And that's what I love. Bringing over games that they really think that people are going to like. The games that get a sort of cult following. So, gotta love Xseed, man. Every time I play an Xseed game, I am not disappointed. In fact, I am usually very impressed. This game was fantastic, and I know I've rambled on for long enough, so I'll, I'll come to the end here. Thank you all very much for watching, and Special thanks to Witch of Swords for making those awesome title cards. I really enjoyed playing this game, and I hope that you all had fun watching it, and have developed a new appreciation for sort of games that you see in the store and think to yourself, maybe I'll pick it up next time. For games like that, I do recommend that you pick it up the first time, because by the time next time rolls around, it might just be too late. This game's not going to be hard to find online or anything like that, so I do recommend picking it up if you can. Thank you all once again for watching, and we'll see what we uh, we'll see what we play next. Until next time, everyone.